Parents are dealing with huge demands with respect to time and their energies. Parenting is no more an easy task, especially with the onset of this pandemic. And pandemic stress has taken a toll and patience is wearing down. In today's video, I am going to talk to you about 10 powerful antidotes to reduce pandemic stress in children. Hey folks, welcome to CSK Speaks. I am CSK and I am an educator. Today, we are going to talk something very, very interesting for all of us when it comes to helping our children beat the pandemic stress. 10 powerful techniques or 10 powerful antidotes to beat pandemic stress among our children today. You may call it a class, crash course on parenting, but this is the need of the hour. Now, before we get started with the number one, we need to understand the context in which we are discussing this topic. We all know that dr dramatic and traumatic experiences will have an overbearing, overbearing impact on children. Yes, and when I say this, normally when the children are growing up, you may not see that impact, but it invariably comes back to affect them the way they design and deal with life as they get into their adolescence. And the last two years has been very difficult on the children and that's a no-brainer. In fact, as an educator, in all the hundreds of webinars and seminars I have been participating over the last two years, I have always maintained, and I want to repeat that here, that children are going through a crisis within a crisis. I mean, look at it around us. As adults, we are trying to yet wrap our heads around the pandemic and the new normal, but children, one, they don't understand the pandemic to start with, and two, they really don't understand the impact of the pandemic on their social and psychological lives. And that's why I call it as a pandemic and a crisis within a crisis, a double pandemic. Now, it's not all so dim and uh, bad. There is also hope. There is also opportunities for us to beat this. And that's what we're going to discuss this. And thanks to all the researchers and the developmental scientists that they have come up with these powerful antidotes. And when we use it with choice, they can create magic. In fact, they can actually erase almost totally the impact of such adversities on the child's life. And we as adults and parents, we need to understand these tools because we need them to implement it in our daily lives. Now, before we get started, one more disclaimer. Many of us already have used these things or some of them in our daily lives without knowing that these are some of those tools as recommended by developmental scientists. Why am I bringing it to your consideration right now is because this is a great opportunity for us to one, reflect on our practices and bring them back to reality one more time by revising because pandemic and the new normal has actually thrown us off our routines, has thrown us off guard. And it has created a different impact in our own lives that we do not go back or we normally don't tend to go back to our previously existing habits, practices and routines. Alright, so enough has been said about the context. Let's get into the 10 techniques, the 10 powerful antidotes to reduce pandemic stress in your children. Number one. Number one is connect with one another. Yes, enough evidences suggest that the connection through communication, through touch, through feel, through camaraderie, through presence, physical presence can do magic to young budding children. So the first one, the first powerful antidote is 
connect with one another. Now, how do we do this? Don't take this as, well, pandemic has made us stay indoors under the same roof almost 24 bar 7. So what do you mean by connecting? No. I'll give you an example and think of it in this way. We all know that we breathe. In fact, if we don't breathe, we don't exist. But is that equivalent to meditating? Not at all. Meditating is conscious breathing. And unconsciously, we do breathe to exist, to carry on with our days. So when I say connect with your children, I am asking you to do it consciously. And the best way to do it is set up a bedtime routine. Set up some time where you can consciously connect with them, maybe talking through how was their day. What is, read the story to them or try to talk to them about different things. Just listen to them, just share your day and connect with them consciously. And by doing all of that, you are establishing a fact that you are always, always available for them and they feel connected to you because they are getting your physical presence with your conscious connection. So this is one important routine which you can create in your lives. Number two is supporting children's friendships. Yes, many parents who I deal with complain to me that today children do not go out to play outdoors and pandemic has only made matters worse by making them restrict to indoors. And the other common complaint is parents say that children are always busy on their virtual platforms, video games. Now, as an educator, as somebody who deals with these kind of complaints regularly, I have a solution. And my solution is to encourage your children to connect with their friends even virtually. Yes, Zoom rooms are the norm today. Let them connect with them. FaceTime is another opportunity to connect with friends. And more importantly, video games. I may be one of the only educators who will recommend you for video games, but I have a condition there. Ask them to play a video game with their friends. All video games today have that option where they can connect virtually with friends and do it. What happens by doing that? By just allowing them to share that space, common time together, you are instilling a sense of empathy in them. And when they connect, they just don't talk video game. They talk their lives. And that friendship is important. Today, one of the other important challenges which pandemic has brought in is children cannot go to schools or are not going to schools depending on the case in different cities across the country today. But more importantly, they are losing out on their social lives. They cannot connect. They cannot have that friendships on the playground or in the corridors or at the school bus. That's the problem, right? Why can't they translate that to a virtual space? Not every virtual tool is bad. When we are connecting to our distant relatives through virtual platforms, why can't they get connected? So that is the other tool or the second tip for you to encourage them to develop friendships, even though virtually, and that is another powerful antidote. Number three. Number three is find ways for children to help others. Yes. As a neighbor, you must have helped your neighbor. Maybe to bring in that mail or to help them with a shopping bag or even to support them with some curd or salt or whatever, right? We all have gone through that. And many a times we use children as our messengers. But that's not enough. I want you to go a next step, a step further. Educate your children. Talk to them about why are you doing that? Why are you helping your neighbors? Why are you helping people who are not related to you in any way? Why are you spending time to serve people around you? And by doing this, you are also inspiring them to do the same. Make your children do that. Maybe, you know, help the laundry man to carry for those clothes. Maybe get something for your neighbor when your child is going to the supermarket inside the community or maybe nearby. Maybe dog walking. How can your child help your neighbor's dog? These things will definitely bring that kind of relationships and it tells them one thing very, very subconsciously. They are not alone. 
they are helping people. And remember, all of us, the ultimate pursuit is happiness. And happiness will come only by serving people. So by doing this, by being an example, you are able to help them to follow that. So that's the technique number three or the third antidote. Number four, help children stay involved in clubs or groups. Now this is counterintuitive. We feel that COVID is basically taking people away, making them islands of isolation. No, they can still be a part of some of those very, very important groups and clubs. For example, a cycling club, a nature's club or a pet's club. Why don't you encourage them to be a part of it? Why? Because when they belong to a community, they feel respected, they feel wanted and they feel important. And by doing this, you are not only taking care of their social emotional development, you are also helping them to understand that they are a part of the bigger ecosystem called society. And they learn a lot. I mean, we all know when we belong to a club, we learn norms, not rules. We learn norms. We learn how to behave. We learn socially acceptable behavior. We also learn the do's and don'ts of community living. So make them be a part of different clubs. Some operate virtually, some operate physically, like creating a bubble. You can have a club where you can host it in your own house, maybe for five, seven kids, and then call it a book club, where each one of them can come with a book, share the book with others, read it for some time for an hour or so, and then they go back once every week. By doing this, you are instilling habits. And let me not stress too much on habits, because we all know, as adults, we are nothing but creatures of our own habits. Technique number five or antidote number five. Stay in touch with important adults. Yes. Children, when they are in touch with some important, significant adults in their life, they actually evolve into holistic individuals. Let me give you an example of how the impact of a grandparent is or can be on the child. We are all, look at ourselves, we are all products of our grandparents' upbringing. Some of us may mistake that it's our parents who did it. Yes, of course, with due credit to them. But you cannot write off the role of our grandparents in our upbringing, isn't it? And some of it, some of it holds very dear to us even today thanks to our grandparents and also some other significant adults in the family. Like if you're living in a joint family or if you have your relatives nearby, your Mosa, your Mossi, your uncle, your aunt, those people... Nana, Nani, all of these people have an important role in your life, right? So connecting your children to them. And I'll tell you, I can give you n number of examples of my friends, friends of my age who are in their late 30s, who even today cherish their wonderful, wonderful relationship with their mother's brother. Yeah. Now, those are the relationships that you can cherish and also treasure as you grow up. So as a parent, you can do it by encouraging them to develop those relationships with the significant adults in their lives. Antidote number six. Antidote number six is keep up with hobbies. Yes, self-care, hobbies, time pass has all gone out of the window because of the pandemic. But what you can do is you can still consciously bring in hobbies into your life as well as your children's life. I still remember the times where dad and I used to enjoy a game of chess after dinner. Of course, winning or losing did not matter because some of the times our game of chess used to last more than three days. We used to play for 30-40 minutes till we want to sleep and then we used to preserve the chess board for the next day and the coming day. So that's how it is. But it helped me to look forward to the whole day. Because the whole day, I was looking forward to that last 30-40 minutes of my day to enjoy that game with my dad. And we know what hobbies will do is two birds in one shot. Number one, you are able to allow them to explore their potential, their true potential and talent. 
but two it will also give you that quality time with your children you can spend that undisturbed time in a more enjoyable manner and that's what make it special because at the end of the day our life is nothing but collection of memories collection of experiences so hobbies will help you create those memories and experiences with your people with your loved ones with your children so use this as a powerful antidote to beat the pandemic stress for your child number 7 be physically active now we all know the scientific reason and the science behind physical activity the the hormonal changes which happens in the body be it the dopamine and other things which will help you to rejuvenate yourselves right i am talking to you today fresh out of a 5 km run this morning but then it's the energy which changes inside you but not just that by just being physically active you are also establishing strong emotional bonds just imagine this taking your child for a walk maybe in the evenings or early mornings or doing yoga together or doing walking together in the house that zumba or that dance or even just simple stretching will help them develop a routine the importance of physical activity now by doing this you are not just using your time wisely you are also rejuvenating it because we all know that the human body is deeply connected to the human mind and both have an interconnected relationship interdependent relationship so if you have a good body you have a healthy mind and that's what we all are looking for to beat the pandemic stress now the antidote number 8 create routines i call it routine power routine power is very very interesting and important in fact one of the books i read taught me one important lesson they said that it does not matter what happens in the main part of your day because that's not in your control what happens in the first 2 3 hours of your day and what happens in the last 2 hours of your day is very much in your control isn't it that's the power of routine how do you get your day started what do you do in the first 1 or 2 hours of your day and how do you end your day set up morning routines and evening routines for yourself and for your family display those weekly charts monthly charts daily plan whatever it is in public places where all your family can access like on the refrigerator or on the mirror at the dressing table or even your bedroom door the inner side of your bedroom door is a great place for you to put everything still hide it away from visitors and people who come in unannounced now these things will help them create that routine and once they create that routine you are fostering habit development and i can again go back and talk about habits but you already know it so habits make people so how, what goes in to create those routines how do you plan and execute really really makes an important impact in the life of children now talk about antidote number 9 is keep realistic expectation for learning now we all know that the pandemic has put in so much pressure on parents that it is no longer the weekend or helicopter parenting you are almost with your child every single step of their learning journey at least for the last 2 years and rightfully so because you are at the house you are taking care of your child's requirements be it completing their homework or whatever assignments given by the student uh, by the school to the student encouraging them to read and prepare well for their assessments but we also know by now especially you know by now that learning does not only happen inside the classrooms and learning happens in a variety of ways in the daily life for example you take your child for shopping the exchange of money the calculation of the quantity the units the volume all of that matters right that's a that's again a lesson in arithmetic you drive them around in the city you can talk about the weather the seasons the changing uh, environment civic uh, you know uh, discipline or civility all of this so learning does not happen just in the classrooms right so as a parent 
you also understand this particular technique in a deeper context, which is realistic expectations. So you know how much you can push your child and you also know how much your child can deliver. So don't try to put something so much on them where marks become the only way you measure your child's progress. Yeah. So do not put unrealistic expectations on them because remember this, everybody is going through a new normal and it takes time, especially for children, to adjust to the new realities. Well, the last antidote, the last antidote for us to beat the pandemic stress among our children is maintaining a safe and healthy home. Yes, very important. Very important because we have learned the importance of cleanliness. We have learned the importance of hygiene. We have learned the importance of sanitation and many other things. Not that your houses were dirty, but I am trying to tell you that we need to create more and more consciously safe zones in our homes and involve your children to do that. Involve them because they understand this. And when they are doing it, they understand the why behind why they are doing and that way they are smoothly transitioning into the new normal. So creating a safe and healthy zone is maybe your responsibility, but maintaining that safety and healthy zone in the house definitely should be the responsibility of everyone in your family. So make that a reality in the normal, in the new normal. Well, these are the 10 powerful antidotes which you can implement starting today. And if you liked any of them, do comment in the comment column. And if I have missed anything, do add to the list. Not necessarily that we can have only 10. You can bring in more because many viewers who will watch your tips can implement that. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is not a comprehensive exhaustive list. And this is not a new list. You have done this many a times before 2019. But this video is that refresher for all of us to help our children come out of this pandemic stress. Well, before I go, let me give you another bonus. And this is sibling love. Many of you have more than one child and encourage your elder child to take over as a parent for the younger ones. And I'll tell you this, they will surprise you. They will surprise you. I can't help but share this experience which I had when I was watching one net, uh, what is that, OTT series on uh, Hotstar called Arya. Keeping all the drama aside, just spend some time, if you have watched it, on the relationship between the three children especially the elder one. The elder one is basically nothing else other than a mature parent for the younger two siblings. So that's what I mean when I say that you can see that change the minute you make them responsible and they will surprise you and in nine out of 10 ways in a pleasant way. So that's the bonus gift to you apart from these 10 powerful antidotes, sibling love. Think about it and start implementing it.